Hey, so I've been getting a bunch of questions about my studio space and how I set it all up and mainly how do I get the sounds from my synthesizers onto my computer? Now, this is quite an interesting process. We could just take the sound from my microphone and then straight on the camera. How do we do those, those nuances of the audio itself? So I thought, why not show six different ways we can capture the audio and getting it onto our computer? Um, before we even start, I would like to say we are dealing with voltages and preamps, so always turn down your synthesizer so there's no sound coming through. So when you record, it doesn't create those pops and damage any hardware. So number one is just getting a cable and taking a line out from our synth and then putting it into our microphone jack. Now this is the easiest and simplest one of the lot, all we need is a cable and a computer that has an auxiliary microphone jack. Um, yeah, so we can just plug it in, we can play, we can start recording straight away. Now, one of the downsides to this is that auxiliary microphone only has one uh, signal, and then it also relies on the sound card. So if your computer doesn't have a good sound card on that, you might be getting a less than quality recording. And yeah, it is a direct line into your computer, so definitely make sure you turn off the volume and turn it off. And then what you do is when you plug it in, you open up your door, you think of the hottest sort of signal that you're going to play, you've got that preset, and then you slowly start turning it up, testing within the door before it starts peaking, so you know you're not going to damage your equipment. Now, my second way of recording the audio is using an audio interface. And this is my first one and was like the first piece of gear I got to help me record my sound because what it allows us to do is it's a USB interface where I can connect it to my computer and then I can plug my audio into this. And this is designed to take audio level signals, uh, line level, it's designed for instruments. So there's preamps, there's microphone preamps, there's um, phantom power so we can actually get a lot more control over that signal and it's designed for recording instrument sounds instead of just like a plain microphone so we get a lot more higher fidelity with this machine now some of the downsides is um, they're a bit more expensive like I think I paid about 220 Australian for this and there are units that are quite cheaper um, and there are more expensive versions and it just gives you more interface points and yeah, you are limited to those interface points. So with this one, I can record two line in signals. So I can get a left and a right channel. I could have two mono channels. I could have one instrument and a microphone going. And then that allows me to split it up in the door and then record parts separately so I can mix them later and not have them all mix into two channels. And yeah, this is probably the way I would go to start recording instruments into my computer like if I had one synth I'll just use that plug it into here treat it the same way as I did in the first method and then yeah it just allows me to keep layering on parts to what I'm working on so I could be like using the synth to make a drum pattern and then I move on to making a lead line and then I move on to like the melody and the bass line and then yeah I can create something really complex quick by just layering on a bunch of different of the same synthesizer now my third method for recording audio is getting a mixer unit. Now if you're more of a doorless jammer you're probably more wanting one of these because you can plug all your synths in and it gives you a bit of extra features than what the synths can provide and you can make the mix of your gear right here. Now on here we've got extra things like we can amplify the signal, we can EQ it, we can send it the um, sound to an effects unit and then bring it back in so we can actually have like an effects chain going on. Um, we can control the amount or the level of the audio so we can fade things in and out. And some of these units do come with an effect. This has like a little delay inbuilt, which is really handy if we want to just add some quick effects. Now, this was a cheapish unit and these can get quite expensive and complex. Like I've seen ones that have like 22 plugs along the top. And if you had like a massive setup, be just really handy to have everything connected to here. You can mix and master to all you want in the old fashioned analog style. And then all you really do is you spit out a two channel signal to your computer, which you can either record with an audio interface, but sometimes these have like a little USB plugged in the top, which you can uh, take the signal to your computer that way. Now, these can be a bit limiting if you're not playing everything live, like if you've got two or three synths working at once. 
um, you have to be playing it all live or you can do a similar thing where you can have playing one set of keys which is in one channel so you make sure that channel is active and the computer is listening to it then you can fade out and then switch to a different instrument which is plugged in a different line have that hook up and then go to your computer so it just allows you to route all your gear together into one spot and then feed it into your computer now the fourth way I usually record my sound to the computer is using a field recorder. Now this is my little Zoom H2N which I get a lot of use out of. And if you're going for the more portable style of uh, making recordings out in the field, so you've got some synths that are battery powered, you can take them out to a day trip and then record the sound, this would be up your alley because what we can do similar to the first method we can take the signal from a mixer or the synth itself and then plug it straight into line in and this also is designed for capturing audio from sound so it does a really good job of capturing it. it's also got a microphone on it so we can take samples and muck around with them and yeah all of this is recorded to an SD card so when I get home I can plug it straight into my computer actually got to use this quite a bit recently as I went down to Melbourne to play live and I also got to go to MESS which is Melbourne's electronic sound studio and they have a whole bunch of old synthesizers to play you can pick one out and they'll show you how to use it and plug it in and I really got to experience a CS80 for the first time so I spent a bit of time just recording a whole bunch of different sounds and that to my uh, field recorder and then when I got home I could create virtual instruments of what I created now it does have a bit of downfall it is battery powered so you got to worry about that um, it is a line level signal so we can take that in but it's only duophonic and these do get quite expensive now I think this unit was about two to three hundred dollars when I picked it up and yeah they just get more and more complex but we can have things like XLR connectors at the bottom similar to how this unit works and yeah but these are quite handy to have around now the fifth way i record sound to my computer is using microphones so when i was mucking around playing the volca keys next to the microphone um, sometimes that can be quite desirable and really i do enjoy amping my synths through a guitar amp i have done a video on how i do it and how i set it up so definitely check that out but Really, you can colour the sound by how we pass it through a speaker and then how we pick it up. So, And those colourings can add a lot of different flavour. Like one of the things I've really enjoyed doing, if I've got velocity, I would get the guitar amp to just break up when it's like low velocity. So I can play a section quite softly and it's starting to break up and then I can start pounding and getting that really distorted sound. Now... A big downside to this is you do need a space to do it. Um, it can take up a bit of room to set something like this up. And we are dealing with loud signals, so neighbours as well. Um, there is a bit of coin to invest in doing something like this. Like you need the microphones, you need the cables, you need other bits of gear to amplify the signals and bringing it all together. And you do need guitar amps. So if you go rummaging for like um, cheaper amps or anything like that, um, but it's really that creative use of gear to find different sounds that you can use in your mix. So it can be quite rewarding. And last, I want to talk a bit about the sixth way, which is to use equipment that probably wasn't made to be recording synthesizers, but can add a lot of flavor and character to a sound. Like if you ever got into um, reel to reels or cassettes, you've probably seen them online. People will do some really fantastic things with mucking around with this technology like just recording it straight onto the cassette and then taking on adds so much character like the saturation the soft clipping and all that analog distortion and then we can use the stuff inside of it so we can actually take apart like um one thing i like doing with my reel to reel is cutting the tape and making tape loops and then recording to that and then seeing how i can change it up and do weird and wonderful things so yeah, this is really experimenting with the sound of the actual synthesizer, but it gives us a lot of versatility to muck around with. Now the downside is, is finding this hardware. Some of it's quite old and non-functioning anymore, but you might have some luck about asking around in your community or your parents as well. They might have something that you can borrow or if you don't destroy it and yeah, see how you can use it for your sounds. So I hope that's given you a bit of information about how all these work in by themselves, but it's really that combination of how they come together that really
provide you that workflow on how you record your sound like you could have it so all your synths are plugged into a mixer that mixer is fed into like a little two channel uh, interface and then you plug that into your computer you could also get a larger interface and then have all your connections go onto that and then feed into your computer you could also use your door as like a soft mixer so you can have sounds go in and sounds come out you could record all your samples and then just use the samples straight in your door like you can just bypass having to connect it to your computer and yeah you can do some really interesting things with mucking around with sound you could route say or some ways i've done it is route a synth through another synth that can take an uh, external sound and then you get a whole different synth to control the sound itself which can be quite interesting so yeah it is quite the experimentation and it's really figuring out what works for you like my setup that i'll go through in a bit might not work for you and really you got to grow with your gear and figure out how you can use it the best way it can be used now i'm going to go through my setup and how i route everything in this room to connect to my computer and this sort of comes with a bonus number seven which is in patch bays now patch bays is an interesting concept as you can have um, signals come in and out of it in different ways so if you look at what i've got set up you can route sounds from the top and then feed them down to the bottom and it's just an awesome way of interconnecting everything in the room to one spot so you've got like a whole bunch of patch leads and then you can feed that in so when i'm working on a project i can set up which synths i want plugging them into my audio interface and then that audio interface is fed into my computer where i can separate out those channels so i could play a whole session live and have every single track recorded at once and then i can manipulate that in uh, or i use reaper but also i can use that in a special way of getting sounds out so i could have vsts playing which i'm routing through my external gear which yeah it creates a lot of dynamics and versatility of this room and really the other cool thing is when i'm making the synth tutorial videos i can actually separate out a second feed and then route it out of my um, patch bay and then that patch bay is fed into my camera and then yeah so i'm recording a live session straight to my camera at full audio quality that sounds really good and what the camera preamps i bypass them so i'm getting that raw sound straight onto my recording so i can just put it straight into my computer and off i go so now recording audio is quite a large topic and i've just briefly glazed over the top so i hope this has given you a bit of direction for recording your sound and how i record my sound you can like if you found this really enjoyable give it a thumbs up or if you have a different way of doing it or your setup feel free to leave them in the comments below like i'm really interested in talking about this topic because i always find it interesting and in learning new ways of connecting gear and seeing how all this stuff can work together really nicely so i hope this has given you a bit of insight on how to do this and i hope to see you next time